The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Kent Washington, on your new fire apparatus, job number 30323. Please utilize this job number when referencing your vehicle with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting out on the front bumper, you'll find a right and left electronic siren. Moving just inward of that location, you'll find dual air horns. Moving more toward the center, you'll find two attachment points, tow hooks. Located directly in the center, you'll find your mechanical siren. Moving up onto the body itself, you'll find a right and left turn indicator arrow. Moving just on the outside, right and left side of the apparatus, you'll find this marker light and turn indicator. Moving just inside, you'll find your headlight cluster. Low beams are on the outer portion, and on the inner portion is the location of the high beam. Moving up onto the top, you'll find an emergency warning light. And moving up just beneath the windshield area, you'll find two grab handles on the right and left. Moving upward, you'll find three windshield wipers across the seamless front windshield. Moving just outside on the right and left, you'll find your mirror combination of a flat and convex mirror. Moving up to the top, you'll find your running lights. Mounted up on the top, just above those running lights, you'll find two forward-facing fixed floodlights. Up onto the very top, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Located just inside that emergency light bar, you'll find your Opticom. And at the very top, you'll find a Go light. This is a spotlight controlled with inside the cab. Here's some close-ups of your light cluster at the very top. We'll move down and take a look at the bumper, close up once again. Let's go underneath and look at the very bottom section of your apparatus. And let's start now on the driver's side. Let's start with the front wheel. Looking down at the front wheel with your Goodyear tires. In addition, you have a Stimco hub. This is a visual stim indicator for your hub. Looking at the mirror set combination, you have a flat mirror on the top, convex mirror on the bottom. Just to the rear of the front door, you'll find in a compartment here, just behind the operator and behind the passenger. On the second set of doors, you'll find Shoreline Inlet. This is an auto eject plug. Generalized view here of the pump panel area. We'll go ahead and take a look in the upper left hand corner. This is going to be your cross lay sections. These are through cross lays. Let's go ahead and start with the pump panel at the very top. When your pump is properly engaged, you'll find this light that activates. Starting in the upper left hand corner, this is your pump intake. Moving to the right, you have your pump discharge and just beneath that there are two ports this is your test and vacuum port let's go ahead and start on the pump panel area on the far left hand side you'll find instructions for your husky foam system moving just to the right hand side you'll find your in control this is going to be an frc throttle control and pressure control module moving to the right you'll find your pump light switch this is for the panel lights and just beneath that, you'll find an indicator indicated that your pump is engaged. We'll talk about this set of rocker switches in the next set of images. We'll move all the way down. You'll find these turn style. This is your inline engine cooler and also your recirculating line. Up to the very top, you'll find your Pierce foam system. Moving to the right, you'll find your foam level indicator currently indicating empty and also your tank fill. Let's jump over to the set of uh, rockers. This is your front scene lights, driver scene lights, officer scene lights, driver pull light and officer pull light. Those are just behind the rear cab and in red your air horn. Starting over in the left hand side, you'll find your number one crosslay. 
Moving over, you'll find your number three cross lay. We'll go down to the section just to the right of that, and this is your low water level, 12 volt heater probe, 12 volt heater probe, and a rinse pump on off switch. Just beneath that, you'll find your hot water rinse outlet. And we'll start at the left-hand side, work ourselves across. These are going to be all your cross lays. In addition with the ability to pump foam, they're individually color-coded and also labeled. Moving just down from this location, this is going to be the officer side, passenger side, large diameter discharge in green, and this is the associated control for that. This is the uh, electronic valve from Watrous. We'll talk uh, what's behind this compartment here in the next set of images. As we open this compartment door, you'll find the location for your water strainer. Just up from the water strainer, you'll find your internal relief valve. Moving over, you'll find your electronic deluge discharge. This is an electronic valve and also the driver's rear discharge, an electronic valve. Moving just to the right, you'll find additional warning labels regarding the use of standing or operating the vehicle while in motion. Moving down, you'll find your Pierce maintenance schedule and information. Down at the very bottom in the red, this is the placard for your Watrous pump. It gives you information regarding the type and style of pump. And directly in the center with the Pierce logo, you'll find your large diameter intake. Moving all the way to the right hand side, this is your fire pump prime. It is an auto prime. You can choose to prime or position the auto prime location. And it does recommend that you have your RPMs at at least 1000. Down at the very bottom, this is your pump maintenance schedule at 150, 200, and 250 test pressures. Moving to the left, you'll find your air supply and your air outlet just below that. As you move further to the right, you'll find your water strainer drain. And then move just slightly to the right here to this inlet this is your hot water rinse inlet just above that you'll find your warning instructions uh, for your use of owner's manual and also this warning label regarding pressurized caps and to relieve those caps prior to opening down at the bottom you'll find your color-coded associated drains to the far right you'll find your pump drain and just beneath that you'll find a caution label and also your manual pump shift We'll also talk about what's behind this compartment door, access door in just a few moments. And then all the way to the very far right, you'll find your auxiliary foam inlet function port. Let's go ahead and take a look inside that compartment. This is going to be your foam level. You want to leave this handle in a horizontal position for foam operations and to fill, move it to the vertical position, restore it back to its original position. You'll see you have three steps that are fold down. Let's go ahead and take a look at individually into the compartments here. We'll start first with the first compartment next to the pump panel. As we open and reveal inside this area, you'll find you have a wood tool board in the back. You'll also find additional pull-out style drawers. These are all fixed, but yet adjustable. Let's go ahead and move down to the very bottom, front and rear of the wheel. You'll find these access doors. These are set up for SCBA bottle storage. Moving to the right-hand side, you'll find you have SCBA storage, your DEF tank, and also your diesel fill. Moving up to the very top compartment, you'll find an adjustable shelf. Moving to the rear compartment, you'll find two adjustable shelves in the upper right-hand corner. As you can see, the red and black termination blocks, those are for your 12-volt access points. Let's go ahead and move to the very rear of the apparatus. We'll talk a little bit about some of the components within this area. Let's first start down at the very bottom. You have a pull-out style step. In the back, you also have right and left in this light cluster. It houses reverse, turn, brake, and an emergency light. Moving up from that location, you'll find this switch, which controls the lights facing to the rear. And at the very top, license plate holder. And at the very top of the image, you'll find your reverse camera. Moving just inside to the center area, you have a center mounted door. This is a two function pull door. Once it's open, it reveals that you have an adjustable shelf within the inside area. And as we look, we have a traffic advisor in the center. There's also some warning labels and right and left uh, discharge ports for large diameter. 
There are also steps that fold down on the left hand side and I would like to remind you of those warning labels. Up in the very top you have additional storage location here. This is for potentially long backboard storage or additional storage of your choice. Let's move around to the passenger side of the vehicle. Generalized view of the passenger side. Let's start down at the lower section, passenger side. You can see here you have a drain valve for your rear intakes and also you have a folding wheel chalk. Looking inside this compartment, you can see you have a tool board mount in addition with adjustable shelving and also a pullout shelf. In the upper left hand corner, you have a Shoreline 15 amp and also a 12 volt DC uh, package location. Let's go ahead and talk about the compartments within this area. Just in the area of the tire, you'll find you have a SCBA storage in addition with bottle storage and storage straps. Moving to the front section, SCBA storage and once again bottle storage locations with safety straps. As we move down to the very bottom, this is your exhaust. Would like to point out that exhaust is extremely hot and there's a warning label regarding that. As we move further on to the forward of the pump panel area, you'll find your powered equipment rack. This is where you uh, lower and raise your equipment rack to gain access to your ladders. You have a 16 foot roof, 28 foot to extension. You also have just above that a 10 foot folding attic and additional long tool storage locations. Moving to the center compartment. As we look inside this compartment, you can see that it is a single latch pull style. Once the compartment is open, it reveals the tool board, which you can mount tools on. It is adjustable, and on the rear wall, you have additional possibilities for mounting of equipment. To make sure that this door latches back to its original position at the very top, there is a spring located at the very top, or I should say piston style, and this showing now the locking mechanism on the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and move to the next compartment forward. This has adjustable shelves with inside, and I should also mention that all of your compartments have interior lighting. We'll now move midship location. As we move up to the midship location at the very top, you're going to find these cross lays. There are four. Uh, there are also cross lay netting here, which you can see the orange strap for quick release. We'll go ahead and talk now at the lower section of your pump panel and identify some of the items and components within this area. First, this is your cab lift to lift the cab of your vehicle. As we look forward, you'll find two additional two and a half inch discharge ports on each side of the equipment powered rack. You'll also find a large diameter intake, which is the Pierce logo. Moving to the right, you'll find your passenger side uh, discharge large diameter. Moving just up from this location, you'll find your two and a half inch cross lay, and you'll also find your number two cross lay. Both of those are foam capable. Down in the lower left hand corner, you'll find your number two officer side green discharge drain. And on the right hand side, you'll find additional drains that are also labeled and color coded. Inside this access door, once we open this access door and reveal the information and stuff behind it, let's take a look. This is gonna be your powered equipment rack hydraulic reservoir. Looking down beneath, you find your uh, pull-out style step. Once the step is pulled in the outward position, you can also return and flip it over so it has more surface area. This is also location of your real rewind and also drain valve. Underneath all points, you'll find perimeter lighting, not only for entry points, but also for ground effect. This is displayed now with that step in the full outright position. Let's go ahead and move to the forward section of the cab. We'll talk about some of the compartments here. On both the passenger and driver's side, you'll find the smaller compartment. As we move up onto the body itself, this is the same compartment as there is on the other side. It does have an adjustable shelf just with inside this compartment, but access is to the rear and also with inside. At all points of access, you'll find these labels regarding the use of seat belts. Also in the front passenger seat, you have a supplemental restraint system. There is also a warning label regarding the use of that supplemental restraint system and not blocking it. Please heed the advice of those warning labels when mounting equipment. Once again, access into all doors, you'll find this seatbelt information and warning labels. As we move further inside on the passenger's side, you have single remotes for the windows and on the driver's side, you'll have your cluster of four for all control. Looking just inside the cab here, you'll find red seat belts, which are a good indication that they are visually seen for all occupants that they are wearing them. 
you'll also find this candy cane style checkered red white these are warning labels regarding loose wires or active wires behind those sticker locations on the driver's seat you'll find your air ride adjustment and also like to point out this label this is going to be down at the right leg area about foot high you have a warning label regarding diesel exhaust emissions and the hazards associated and also equipment damage and make sure you read your service manual before doing any maintenance also on the right hand side this large yellow Pierce label. This is your manufactured by. This gives the date of manufacture, job number, gross vehicle weight. It also gives a VIN number, which is also on the A pillar, and also all of your fluid capacities. General view down into the operator section. We'll break down some of the components here. First, let's start with the electronic siren on the left, and also your mechanical siren on the right hand side. These are foot pedals. Moving up onto the dash area, you'll find your ABS diagnostic, DPF regen engine regen, and last your regen inhibit. Moving up you'll find your silver quarter turn battery switch. This is the master switch for your batteries and moving to the right you'll find your command zone. This is a diagnostic port next to it in green, engine port, ABS, uh, those are all diagnostic ports. Just up from that you'll find the controls for your go light. As we move up on top of the steering column you'll find your hazards and also your tilt and also the ability to telescope that steering column. To the left hand side you'll find your ignition and start, emergency master, your panel lights, and also your headlights. The panel lights are a rocker switch which allows you to dim and brighten your panel. General view here of the dash looking forward from the operator's position. We'll start in the lower left hand corner. This is your transmission temperature, oil pressure, DEF level, water temperature, tachometer, speedometer. Moving to the right set of cluster of gauges you'll find your fuel gauge, voltage meter, front and rear air, and you'll also find displays that will illuminate when there are concerns or issues. For example, you have now the parking brake on, it's illuminated in the very top section. Let's go ahead and move to the left hand side of the dash area. You'll find this yellow placard. The yellow placard indicates as it comes from the manufacturer, your height 9 feet 11 inches, length 33.25, and gross vehicle rate at 22 tons. Moving just inside, generalized view here of the right hand side of the dash area. Let's go ahead and start and talk about some of the components within this area of the dash. First starting down at the lower section you'll find your pump shift. This is road to pump and pump to road activation. There's also an engaged for pump and an OK to pump. Moving to the right of that location you'll find your main mirror control in addition with your convex mirror controls. As we move just to the right of that, you'll find your yellow pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release, and also your Allison transmission pad. We'll go ahead and move up from this location. This is going to be your engine brake on off switch. To the right of that is your engine brake for low, medium, and high, your front wheel lock, off road traction devices, mirror heat, and also your tire chains. Moving up from that, this is your Pierce Information Center. Uh, there is a lot of information available here at your fingertips. To scroll through this, I would recommend seeking the owner's manual for additional assistance. Moving to the right hand side, you'll find your climate control. In the gray area, you'll find your heat and defrost. In the red section, the heat. And in the blue, your AC. As we move on to the center mount, you'll find your emergency siren. This is your electronic siren and the controls associated with it and also your PA. Moving overhead, generalized view here, you can see you have push on, push off, red and white lights, in addition with overhead speakers for your stereo system and also all of your headset. Located in the center over the passenger and over the driver's seat, you'll find this intense reading or map light. Let's go ahead and move overhead of the operator. We'll start with the very left hand side in this blue circular. This is a push to talk for your radio system. As we move over to the right, a section of switches here. First in red, your emergency master, a momentary on-off switch for your opticom, driver side scene, officer scene, front scene, rear scene, wheel scene, and also perimeter lights. Moving to the right of that, you'll find an additional set of switches, your backup alarm disable, siren brake in red, you have a load manager and an air horn located here, and the four switches in the center are not activated, but they can be at uh, any point that you add additional components. 
Moving to the right, you'll find your traffic advisor. Here is a low, off, and high, in addition with left, right, split, and flash. Moving just to the right once again, you can see your overhead headsets where plugins are located, stereo, and also your heating and air conditioning system and vents. Let's go ahead and spin around, take a look at the very back. You can see you have two forward-facing SCBA seats and also a seat just on the passenger side, which is a fold-down seat. Looking from the outside into the cab, you'll find this compartment directly behind the driver's area. This compartment has netting and also a switch at the very top to activate the lights with inside that compartment. Once we look just inside the compartment, you can see that there is an adjustable shelf in this area. And as we move overhead in the same vicinity on the passenger side and on the driver's side, you have top mounted compartments. Let's look just inside those compartments. This is the compartment uh, which houses the flashlight in addition with just slightly above this difficult to see but also an adjustable shelf. As we move to the center, you'll find your two SCBA forward facing seats, a lower compartment underneath that with two latches. Just above that, you'll find a 12 volt barrel style access point. Let's look inside this compartment. This is a shore power plug. When powered into shore power, it generates energy into this plug, allowing you to charge your battery charger. Looking inside the compartment here, this is on the side of the officer. Once again, adjustable shelving with inside and also lighting to control the light or this compartment light. It's on the right hand side here with the silver protector. And on the very top, you have tray storage. Let's go ahead and look in between the two seats. Uh, looking here, you'll find this is the back half of the engine. This is the location behind this access point. where you will do your daily checks for oil and transmission. Let's go ahead and move back out the apparatus and look just inside. We're now looking inside the front passenger area. Once again, you'll find those indicators and warnings for seatbelt usage. In addition, in the very front, you can see that your seat is adjustable and you'll find these candy cane style red and white stickers. These indicate that there are termination or wires behind this access panel. Moving to the forward position, this is the location of your supplemental restraint system in the black area. Just beneath that on the panel, there is a warning label. And on the right hand side, you'll see your windshield wiper fill. Looking down at the foot level, you'll find the foot pedal for your mechanical siren. Let's pull back out and take a look at the officer seat. This seat is an SCBA style seat, meaning it houses an SCBA with inside the seat. It also has the red seat belts for easily identifying if an individual has their belt on. Let's go ahead and look underneath. Once again, at your finger touch, this is an adjustable air ride seat. You can see the switch here just located in the middle and also a pull style for sliding and uh, back and forth. In the right hand side, you'll find that uh, wire uh, indicator for the sticker and also on the right, you can see your map reading light. Moving just to the left, you'll find these three plugs. Two in the silver are going to be the barrel style, cigarette style. And at the very bottom, you'll find this plug. Once again, all three 12 volt but this is your USB style uh, for plugging in. Also, just to the left-hand side, you'll find in the blue, this is your blue box for push to talk for the officer's headset. We're gonna go ahead and look overhead of the officer position. You can see once again, there are stereo speakers in addition with the red and white on-off push-on lights. Let's go ahead and cover, there's that intense reading light at the very top, a go light, in addition with your speedometer. As we move to the left, you'll find your unit radio and also some switches slightly above that. And you'll also find in the center a red puck style light that is for the door ajar. Once again, close up here of the go light and also your digital speedometer. And also I'm assuming your engine or access number is 771. Located in the center here is your weather band all purpose radio, CD player and MP3. Moving to the left of that, you're going to find your driver scene, front scene, officer scene, some future switch locations, and also in red, the mechanical siren brake. To the left, you find your pull for your air horn. Generalized view here of the top of the apparatus. We'll talk about some of the components within this area next. 
Let's first start with the hose bed. You can see in the previous image you had a, uh, several adjustable dividers. In addition with storage on the right hand side where the ladder is located. Let's look forward to that location. Here are those compartment doors in the open position. This is going to be on the passenger side of the vehicle. Let's move forward to this location. As we move forward, you'll find two access doors in addition with a general access door. First accessing the smaller doors in the very front and the diamond plate, you'll find this is your water fill location and also your foam tank fill. Um, those are individual doors for each of those uh, tanks. You can also just access the entire panel by lifting the entire uh, door. You can also see that you have perimeter tape for safety while operating on top for personnel. As we look to the back, you can see on the right hand side, those are your adjustable uh, hose beds. And on the left hand side, your main hose bed. Looking forward on top, you'll find your booster line or red line. And also you'll find your large diameter or master stream device. Here's an image of your master stream device. And also you can see that yellow indicator for walking and stepping in that area. And just forward of that, you'll find your cross lays. Also located in here, you can see that you have your water fill location in blue and also your hydraulic fill for your foam pumps. Congratulations, Kent Washington, on your new apparatus, job number 30323. If you have any questions as to the content of these images, or any questions, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations with your new apparatus.